everyone, welcome to the Oaklands YouTube channel. It's fall, y'all. I'm sorry, I have to say that. I'm from Oklahoma. But it is, it's fall, yes! Summer just seemed to last so long, and even though where I am, it's still in the 90s. We have a dry, cool breeze every now and then, so I can feel that fall is in the air. I can feel that it is coming. So to get us in the fall seasonal holiday mood, I thought it'd be fun to do like a crafty sewing project. Maybe not, not like a bag or a quilt, but like a little crafty one. So today, you probably know from the description, we're making pumpkins. All right, so these are adorable. And these are obviously not my idea. You have probably seen these out there on the internet already. You can even buy similar pumpkins in a store. Why do we make them ourselves? Because we can use our own fabric. We can make them in our own design, which just makes them so much more fun. So this is a great family project to do. Get everybody involved. Everybody can make their own little pumpkin. And then you can use them in so many different ways from table settings. Like I have plans to use these on plates at Thanksgiving with little name tags and maybe write in there um, what I'm grateful for, for that person. I also added little strings on them so that I can add them to a garland or hang them on a wreath or hang them on my chandelier. Lots of different options. So I did look over a tutorial for these pumpkins and I will have the link for that tutorial below and I'll have the name of the site right here as well. Um, and I started there. And just like with most things, we start with something simple and then we add on to kind of make it more custom. So I'm gonna show you my take on these pumpkins. So before we get started, if you haven't already, please consider clicking the subscribe button down below. If at any point you like this video, give it a like, comment any questions or comments or other ideas you have down in the comment section. The first comment that I pin will be all the timestamps for every step of this tutorial. You can just click on the number and it'll take you straight there in the video. All right, so let's get started. All right, so with these pumpkins, you can really get creative. The first one I made, I used cotton woven, I did not cut it on the bias. I just cut it like I would normally cut a rectangle. And I added a little button on the bottom. I didn't have really any problems. Now I'll show you the steps that are difficult and I'll show you my strategies for making those a little bit simpler. But this is a very small pumpkin and using cotton woven. The next pumpkin I made, I used cotton lycra, which is just a t-shirt material. And this is just a scrap I had from a big panel. And same thing, I used a bigger cut this time and I added a little twig to it, which I just hot glued in with a little attachment so that I can hang it as I desire. And you can see this other version, I like this size, so I stuck with the size and I'm gonna tell you what size fabric I'm using in just a moment. But this time I used a cotton canvas and it's a thicker material, but it held up really well. So I'm really pleased with this. I would say cotton canvas was actually probably the easiest to work with cotton woven being the least easiest, and cotton lycra pr being pretty good because it has a nice stretch. This pumpkin actually feels like a stuffed animal. Like, you know, kids are gonna wanna cuddle up with it. This is a really cute, cute pumpkin. So the rule of thumb when cutting a piece of fabric for this is that it needs to be twice as long as it is wide. So my fabric is seven inches wide and 14 inches long. Now sky's the limit with this. Any size you wanna work with is fine. I just do prefer this seven inch by 14 inch size. You can see this is the size of the pumpkins and they turn out really nice. So for this, you're going to need a piece of fabric, either cotton woven, cotton canvas, cotton lycra. This is cotton canvas and it needs to be seven inches by 14 inches or twice the length as the width. Now there will be a lot of optional materials in this tutorial, but I'm gonna tell you some of the things that might sound like they should be optional, but I really think they are required. One of those is a small pair of pliers. Now when you're pulling your needle through the middle of this pumpkin over and over again, it's going to become difficult and your fingers are not going to be able to grab onto it. That's where a pair of pliers come in. It's just a third hand, it has very strong fingers. So I like to use these to help me pull out those needles so that I'm not struggling with the needle and end up poking myself. Another tool that I think is completely required is a thimble. Now you can have your own thimble of choice. 
I would not suggest the little glue dot thimbles that go on your finger because when you are pushing this, it can be very difficult and it's very easy for the needle to slide off the glue dot and end up going through your finger. So I prefer these leather thimbles because you just go right over your finger and you can push as hard as you want and no needle is gonna go in your finger. Besides these tools, you're obviously gonna need the basic needle and thread. For my sewing machine, I'm using my standard universal 7010 Schmetz needles. Yes, I do use these with the cotton lycra. No, I have not had a problem. For hand sewing, I'm using two different types of needles. First, I'm going to be using these embroidery needles. These are just various sizes. Really what you want is an, a needle that's not too long and has an eye that's big enough to get a heavier weight thread. These needles are going to be used with a 12 weight thread. So the needle and the 12 weight thread are for the hand sewing portion. You will also need a 40 weight thread to use in your sewing machine. You will be pulling this thread in the pumpkin to bunch the top of it, and it's important that it doesn't break. A 50 weight thread I found broke immediately. A 40 weight thread will still break, but it had a little bit more strength to allow me to really bunch up the ends. For the detailed sides of the pumpkin, you can use a 12 weight thread, but I found it easier to use embroidery floss. This embroidery floss is six strands all twisted together and I leave all of them like that. This thick string ends up creating a very strong and tight finish on your pumpkin. So I do suggest, if you don't already have this on hand, go get yourself some embroidery floss. It's very inexpensive. Now with the embroidery floss, you will actually have to use a different needle. Now this is considered a doll needle or an upholstery needle. It's, you can see it's a little bit longer. Now to show you a comparison of the needles side by side, you can see this is the needle I'll be using with the embroidery floss. You can see that the eye hole's pretty large. Here's the needle that I'm using with the 12 weight thread for construction. So you can see the difference in the needles. The larger needle is used for upholstery and dolls. It's a bit longer, it's a bit thicker, and it has a bigger eye hole. This makes weaving the embroidery floss through the pumpkin and around much easier. The smaller thread is gonna be useful when we do a hand stitch to bunch up the ends. And last but not least, you're gonna need a small pair of scissors. You can see that this project does take an assortment of tools. All of this I had on hand. Now I am a cross stitcher, so I already had quite a few different colors of embroidery floss, but I would think many sewers have most of this on hand. These are jewelry pliers, and so they're a little bit smaller, but if you just had regular pliers in your garage, those will work too. I will have links for all of this in the description down below. You're also gonna need some polyfill, which is just stuffing for your pumpkin. You can find this at most major retailers like Walmart, Target. You can also find it online. I'll have a link for it down in the description below. So making it stem is totally optional. You can see this little pumpkin I have here doesn't have a stem yet. And you can get really creative with what you use for the stem. You can see here I used a twig that I cut. So for that, you'll need some sort of a branch or twig that's dried out, you know, not green in the center. This I just found laying around outside and so I decided to use that. I have some garden clippers that I use to just cut off a small portion. I cut off just about an inch or an inch and a half off of this for my stems. It's nice to have some variation if you're making a few of them, so don't worry about measuring it out, just eyeball it. And to adhere the stem to the top of my pumpkin, I just use a hot glue gun. Now, if you don't wanna use a branch, you have other options as well. You can use a small piece of felt. This one measures one and a half inches by three inches, and you can just roll it up and hot glue it down, and then hot glue it to your center. You can also use a sparkly piece of vinyl if you want a little bit more bling. Roll this up. This one measures one inch by four inches. Roll it up, hot glue it down, and hot glue it to your pumpkin. What's fun about this is that you can really get creative. I think it would be fun to add some Mod Podge and a whole bunch of glitter to the stem and then add that to have a little bit more of a blingy pumpkin. You could spray paint these and add that. You can get really creative with the stem portion of this project. All right, let's get sewing. So today I'm using my Bernina 350 instead of my typical Juki. I find when making these pumpkins, it's much easier if you remove the tray that your machine comes with so you have this nice small base. This allows us to wrap the pumpkin around it as we're sewing. All right, so the first step to constructing our pumpkin is to take the short ends and fold them right sides together. You can use pins to hold these ends together. And now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these together using a standard two and a half millimeter stitch length at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. 
I do like to back stitch at the very beginning and the very end of this step. Now take this to your pressing mat and press the seam open. You might find that if you're using a cotton lycra or a canvas, it doesn't necessarily want to stay open. That's totally fine. This isn't like a quilt block where we really need these seams to be flat. It's not going to make that much of a difference in the end. It just makes doing the basting a little bit simpler. All right, once you get back to your machine, find your stitch length and change it to four. So for me, it's this little bar right here, and I'm going to push it all the way up to four. What we want is a really long stitch length so that we can pull the thread and create a gather at the top and the bottom of our pumpkins. Now, since the base of my unit is nice and small, I can very easily wrap this size pumpkin around so that the bottom hugs underneath while the top can go underneath the needle. If you don't have this option, that's totally fine. Just make sure that the opposite side of your pumpkin doesn't weasel its way in underneath the needle when you're sewing on one end. So I'll show you what I mean. Before you get started, make sure that you have a good amount of your bottom and your top thread pulled out. We want a nice long tail, which will help us pull the thread later on. So make sure you pull it out, I would say at least six inches. I like to start right next to the seam. I found that when my machine thread goes through this seam, it makes it more difficult to pull. So I like to start on one end of the seam, go all the way around, and then stop right before I get to the end. So I'm going to start right here. Now you can see my bottom fabric is down here, and I just need to make sure I keep it out of the way so it doesn't get tucked in. We're not sewing two pieces of fabric together. We're just sewing a stitch on one piece of fabric. So you're going to sew this at a four millimeter stitch length and a quarter of an inch seam allowance. No back stitching this time. And just work your way all the way around the open end. All right, once I get closer to the seam, I like to just make sure I pull back so I can see it. And I get as close as I can to that seam without going on it. This is just my preference. I, like I said, I found that when I'm pulling the stitches out, if it's stitched over the seam, it likes to get stuck and then my thread breaks. If I avoid going over this, I don't have a problem. So once you're done, lift up your presser foot and make sure you give yourself about six inches or more before you cut your thread. And remember, here I'm using a 40 weight thread. Now, you've done one end, we're gonna go ahead and flip it around and we're gonna do the opposite end the exact same way. All right, so now we have two basting stitches that are both a quarter of an inch away from the open ends of our fabric. So now we start hand sewing. What we want to do is we want to create a second basting stitch, but this time by hand. To do this, we want to use a needle that has a bit of a bigger eye hole and 12 weight thread. 12 weight thread is great for this because you can tug on it quite a bit without breaking it. All thread will break, but it takes a good amount of effort to break this thread and I have not broken this thread yet. Now, what we want to do is we want to create two hand stitch lines on both ends of our pumpkin at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I don't typically measure this out. I just eyeball it. I know it needs to be further in than the machine stitching, so I'll usually just eyeball that line. But if you want to be precise, take a ruler and draw a line using the 3 eighths inch mark on your ruler, which is one, two, three ticks in from the end. Use some sort of a fabric pen or just a pencil and mark yourself a line. Do it on both sides. And you can see by me marking this line how close that is to our quarter of an inch seam allowance and why you really would be fine eyeballing it. You see, it's just right next to our quarter of an inch seam allowance. You're also going to need your leather thimble at this point. I like to pull about 20 inches of thread and give it a cut. Now we're gonna be liberal with our thread and with our embroidery floss during the rest of this. You don't wanna get caught with too short of a piece of thread because you're just gonna end up hurting yourself. So I just thread it through my needle, tie myself a little knot on the end, open up your fabric. Now I like to start on the right side of my seam and just insert my needle and then just go along the entire edge of your fabric. I am not a professional <laughs> hand sewer. So my stitches end up being all kinds of different sizes. 
And I think that's fine. I think that the less perfect this is, the better your pumpkin's going to look, right? If you go to an actual pumpkin patch, they don't all look the same. So all the variations just give it character. So just go around the entire edge. Now, the reason I prefer to do a hand stitch for the second row instead of a machine stitch is because this 40 weight thread, it, it does break. And you have to pull this pretty hard to get a nice tight seal on the bottom. And I found that when I use just machine stitches, I, it always broke. By using this hand stitch 12 weight thread on the second layer, I had no problems with the thread breaking. All right, so I just stop right around the, where my knot is. I take my needle off and I put that to the side for now. So before we move on to hand stitching our basting stitch on the opposite end, we're gonna close up this bottom end. This can be the top or bottom in the end. For now, we're just gonna call it the bottom. So I like to pick the thread that's on the wrong side of the fabric. So for me, that's my orange thread. Don't pull the thread that's on the wrong side and the thread that's on the right side at the same time. You just want one thread. So I take the thread that's on the wrong side and when I pull, I don't pull perpendicular to my fabric. If you pull out away from your fabric, your thread will break. You want to pull it in the direction the thread is already going. So my thread is going across like this, so I'm going to pull it in that manner. Now, don't pull hard. You tug a little bit. Once it resists, take your fingers and work it, work the bunching down. Pull a little bit, take your fingers and work the bunching down. Now this step caused me a lot of frustration, honestly, because I wanted it to end up looking nice and tight in the end, and it wasn't, and that's okay. Because that's why we use the 12 weight thread. So once you feel like you got about half of it bunched, leave that side alone, go to the other thread and do the same thing. Pull it in the direction, now this does get messy, but pull it so that you don't have a whole lot of resistance and keep tugging it around and then move the bunching down as you tug it. So once it's about as bunched as it's going to get, you can pull both threads and you see, we still have this pretty generous hole here. That's okay. What we wanna do is we wanna tie off these threads together. And I want you to remember that there's a lot of steps in this where you kind of look at it and you go, there's no way that this is right. This isn't working out. Take a deep breath. It's a messy project, but it works out well in the end. So just do your best to tie off this thread very gently. Don't give it a really tight pull right here, trying to tighten up this hole because it will break. I have broken almost all of my thread this way. We're just trying to tie a knot with this. If it does break, that's okay. You don't have to redo it, just leave it. The next step will clean this up. So once that's good, watch this. Take your 12 weight thread, and you should be able to tell which one the 12 weight thread is. It's quite a bit thicker than the rest of them. Take your 12 weight tail and give that a nice tug. And you see, that is the one that's gonna do a nice tighten bottom. And this one you can tug pretty forcefully, but once it gives you resistance, that's as tight as it's gonna go. So at that point, what I like to do is put it down, thread the needle that I'm using for my 12 weight thread, get my thimble back on. And now we're just gonna start working our way in and out of this mess to make sure that this bottom is closed. So for this, I just make sure that when I insert my needle, it is below my second stitch line. So my second stitch line was my 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I drew that line on my fabric. I just make sure the needle goes in just a kiss below it and that it comes out just a kiss below it. That's gonna make sure you don't see any of these seams on the right side of the pumpkin. And I go back and forth a lot until you are positive there is no hole on the bottom. Now, if these machine threads are getting in your way, just go ahead and grab some scissors and cut them off. Make sure you don't cut your 12 weight thread. If at any point you find that pulling the needle out is becoming very difficult, this is where the pliers come in. Click it onto the tip of your needle, just give it a tug and pull it out, and then use your hand to pull the rest of it out. Once you feel like you've tightened up the bottom really well, you can kind of open it up. As long as you can't put your finger through it, you're fine. To tie it off, I actually just insert this needle into a small piece of the fabric 
and then I have a nice little loop here and I just stick my needle through that loop making a small knot and that's it. I leave a little bit of a tail. This will be on the inside of the pumpkin so that it's not going to be noticeable. Now you can turn it right side out and there you go. You have one end of your pumpkin closed. Now before we stuff, I like to add the next basting stitch. So once again, grab your 12 weight thread and your needle for your 12 weight thread. If you still have some thread left over from the other end, go ahead and get rid of that. The thing with this project is that we are pulling on this thread so much that this piece of thread is not as strong as a fresh piece off of the spool. So throw this away. So again, about 20 inches, thread your needle. Again, I just thread it a little bit and then I tie off the end. Again, I like to start on the right side of my seam, but this time I'm gonna put my needle on the inside of the bag and I'm gonna push it towards the right side out. Now you can see I did not draw a line this time and that's totally fine. All right, and I just like to make it go all the way to meet that first stitch, pull it out, leave my needle off, and now it's time to stuff. Now, how much do you fill it? Well, you don't wanna to put too little in it because then you're gonna have a soggy pumpkin. We want a before Halloween pumpkin. We don't want the after Halloween pumpkin. You know what I'm saying. So I stuff it pretty full, but I don't want to stuff it so full that it makes it almost impossible to work with. This is about how full I stuff it. You can see I have just a lip around here, but for the most part, it's pretty packed in there. Now, we're gonna close these ends just like we did the other one. Again, starting with the machine stitches first, I decide which side of the fabric I want to pull. I'm gonna pull the orange thread, which is on the wrong side of the fabric. So again, I don't pull it perpendicular to the fabric, I pull it in parallel with the fabric. And it broke right away, of course it did. If one of your threads breaks, just grab the other one and give it a little tug. If you face too much resistance, just push your fabric down the thread so that it bunches. And you're just trying to get it about halfway around. Again, this step doesn't need to be perfect because our second row of stitches that we hand stitched on is going to really clean this up for us. This just helps make sure that the raw edges stay tucked inside of the pumpkin and don't pop out. So then grab the opposite side and give it a little basting pull. Once it has resistance, push those folded pieces of fabric down, down the thread. And there we go. And this is about as much as I can do before my thread's going to break. So I like to tie off these threads. Again, keep your 12 weight thread out of this. It's not invited to this conversation right now. Don't tie this tightly in hopes of closing this hole entirely with your machine thread because it won't close it and you'll just break it. So now we have a small opening on the top. We're going to clean that up with our 12 weight basting stitch. If you want to go ahead and trim some of the threads from the machine stitches, that's going to be helpful. Now take your 12 weight thread and give it a nice tug and you'll see it closes that whole thing up. What I like to do is I like to take my finger and stick it in the hole. And what I do is I just keep pushing down on that raw edge and I tug it with my finger in there just like that. And what it does is it makes sure that the raw edge is tucked inside the pumpkin. Once you know that this is gonna work like this, go ahead and add your needle that you're using with your 12 weight thread back to your thread. This is gonna expand a little bit. Don't worry about that. We're gonna tug it close again. Make sure you put your thimble back on your finger. Now all we do is insert our needle into the creases of the fabric, making sure the raw edges are still tucked inside, go across the hole to another crease and pull out. This can be messy, don't worry about that, okay? I know you're gonna say, this is not perfect, this is not exactly what I envisioned, that's okay. It's one of the messy steps. It's all gonna clean up when we use the embroidery floss, don't worry. I like to hold the fabric together a bit with my left hand while I pull with my right hand. You wanna keep your thread pretty taut as you're pulling with your right hand because that will make sure it all stays together really nicely. And you can see I just zigzag. I go in on the same fabric flap that I came out, but then I go across the whole opening to another flap and I'm always trying to stay close to the opening but like in a crease. That just keeps the stitches really hidden. Again, once we use your embroidery floss, it's going to hide so many 
of our stitches. You might realize that you're having a bit of a hard time getting the needle out. Grab those pliers, pull it through, and just keep going. You want to make sure you go through this a, a good amount of times because when we add the embroidery floss, we're going to be pushing on this area a lot and you don't want any of any little hole opening up and your stuffing popping out. All right, once you feel like you've got it pretty closed up, give yourself another stitch or two. What I do to tie it off, I go, I push my needle into the center where I can kind of see some of my threads and then I just tuck it underneath a thread with some fabric, pull it up. Now I have a little hoop here, so I just pull it through like that, knot it off. Now I like to keep a tail on all my knots, so I push my needle into the pumpkin, push it out the side, just like that, pull it, take off my needle, put that in my needle book, then trim off the edge of the string from outside the pumpkin, just like that. Now you have a cute little pillow. So now we're gonna use the embroidery floss to really turn this into a pumpkin shape. Grab your embroidery floss of choice. I like this kind of a yellowish orangish color. I like to cut off about 24 inches of my embroidery floss. I like it a little bit longer. I do find that I need to use two or three cuts in order to do an entire pumpkin. Again, you wanna be liberal with this. You don't want to try to use every bit of this because Really what you're gonna end up doing is ripping something on your pumpkin or you're gonna end up stabbing yourself with your needle. And when you're pushing this thick needle so roughly through this pumpkin and if it hits your finger, it's gonna hurt real bad. So let's not do that. So I have my strand of embroidery floss. You want a nice big needle that has a big eye hole. Like I said, these are upholstery needles or doll needles. I like to get an assortment of sizes. So a lot of times you can buy a package of these needles and they have all different lengths and widths. I just go through all of them until I find one that I'm comfortable with. So pull your floss through it. So you have a little tail. Tie off the end. One, two, three, four. It's gonna be a bigger knot. Now you don't have to decide right now which end is your top and which end is your bottom but you do need to decide which end you're gonna be pushing the needle through. So what I like to do is I actually look for an end that has a thick folds on the bottom because I want to hide my knot. So what I do is I insert my needle into this fold right in between it in the middle. So that way my knot, when it gets pulled in, it'll be tucked in there and nobody will see it. Now you're gonna push it through the center of your pumpkin, push down on your pumpkin while you do this, but go very slowly so you don't end up poking your finger. And then just work it around until you have your needle exactly where you want it. I want it right about in the middle like that. Pinch your pumpkin like this and pull your needle through. If your needle's giving you grief, grab those pliers. Pull it all the way through just like that. Now I use my left hand to keep my pumpkin as pinched as possible while I'm doing this. So now you have your embroidery thread wrapped around. It's on the top, go back to the bottom, Push it up through the middle and try to get it around the same spot that you originally pulled it out and pull out that thread again. Now this time we're going to have a nice tight watch. Pull it nice and tight. Now this embroidery floss, I mean, if you break it, you got some serious strength. It's probably not going to break. So pull it as tight as you can. So I like to go to the opposite side. Instead of going around in a circle for my creases, I like to go to the opposite side of my pumpkin. And I just kind of split the whole thing in half. Again, going to the bottom, pushing it up through the middle. Try to get it about where the other ones came out. Arrange where I want this, pull it out. So if this side is loosening up a bit, go to the top here, not the thread that's attached to the needle, but this part here, and give it a little tug, and that's gonna pull this thread. Now, pull your needle, line up your embroidery floss where you want it, give your needle a little pull, and give it a nice strong tug. There you go. So now I go and I do the opposite ends again. Now you can see at this point, I probably have enough floss to do another go around, but if I do that, I'm gonna have very little floss after to tie it off, so I'm gonna stop here. So to tie it off, I just pull it nice and tight. I use my left hand to pinch it as much as I can. And then I find a strand of, 
the floss and I put my needle under all six of them, pull it through again, make a little loop, push my needle, needle through the loop to make a nice little knot, nice and tight down there. And I'll do a double knot just to make sure. Again, little loop. There we go. So now I just stick my needle into my pumpkin, push it out the side. And this is just making sure the tail stays hidden inside the pumpkin. I'm gonna remove my needle, put it in my needle book, and cut off that tail. So now we're gonna to need to get another piece of embroidery floss to continue on. So again, I'm just gonna find a nice bit of fold down here that I can insert my needle into, push it through, just like that. I'm gonna use my pliers to pull out my needle. So now I have my pumpkin split up into quarters. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do another run through through each one of the quarters so that I have eight little units. All right, I'm gonna get my third piece of floss. Now this piece is going to finish up my pumpkin. It's also gonna be what I use to loop on the top so that I can use this as an ornament if I want to. So to make sure that this stays nice and tight, what I like to do is I like to go down through the top, out through the bottom. I like to do that once and that just locks in that last run around so that I don't have to worry about yanking on it too much. Now, at this point, if you're happy, you can be done. You can tie it off. You can add a button to either side of it if you want to add it for decoration. You can just tie off the end and be done. But what I like to do is I like to add a little loop onto the top of it. If I'm hanging this from a chandelier or from a garland, there's a good chance you're gonna see the bottom. So I want the nicer side, the side that you don't see as much thread on to be my bottom, which is this side. And if it seems a little messy, just tug at your fabric a little bit and you can kind of force those creases to be the way you want them to be. And then it just hides it nice and neat. So this is gonna be my top because it's a little bit more messy and I can add my stem here to cover this up really nicely. So I'm going to insert my needle, pull it out. Now I want about a four inch hoop. Go ahead and eyeball this. If you wanna measure it, you know, you're gonna need this piece of string to be eight inches. But what I do is I just insert it back through the top, out the bottom, but I don't pull it all the way through. So as I'm pulling it through, I'm gonna hold on to this loop and just make sure it stays about as long as I want it. This is what I'm happy with. So once I know that's my length, all I do is go down to the bottom, find another piece of floss, tuck my needle underneath it to create a little loop on the bottom and give myself a knot. Just like that. And that's just gonna hold it in place. And if you wanna double knot it, you can go ahead and just tuck it underneath again, give it another knot. And then to hide our tail, I just insert the needle into the pumpkin, pull it out the side, give it a tug, take off the needle, and clip off the edge. And there is our pumpkin. Now I'm gonna show you my favorite way of adding a stem, which is adding a piece of a branch or a twig that you, you just find laying around outside. I'll show you a couple other stem options as well. So if you have a hot glue gun, it really makes the stem step a lot easier. So go ahead and get that warmed up. Now, if you're gonna use a twig or a stick, just grab your stick and grab some, these are just my garden clippers and find an end that looks neat enough. I just eyeball about an inch to an inch and a half and give it a little clip. And this is a really fun way to add a stem. You can go ahead and Mod Podge this and add glitter to it. You can paint it. You can do all kinds of fun things to customize this before you add it onto your pumpkin. Another option if you wanna get creative is to take a piece of felt. And like I said before, this is one and a half inches by three inches and just give it a good roll like this. And then just take your hot glue gun and glue a little line on the end of your felt, roll it up, let that dry. And you can add this on in the same way that we're gonna add the twig on. You can also try this with a piece of vinyl. This vinyl is a little bit thinner than my felt, but I'm gonna try to give it a nice tight roll. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna give it some glue from the hot glue gun. And these are some different stem options you have for your pumpkin. To add the stem to the pumpkin, if you have a loop for your ornament pumpkin, pull it out of the way so it doesn't get you know glued down in there. Pull it out of the way, take your glue and just give yourself a nice little puddle of hot glue on the inside of your pumpkin, just like so. I put a generous amount in there, I'm not shy. 
All right, and then you just take your stem of choice and stick it right in that little puddle of glue. If you see on the side that there's a gap that it could be a little bit wobbly, go ahead and just add a little bit of extra glue around it. And there you go, and let that set. And that's how you make these adorable little pumpkins. Yes, it requires hand sewing. Oh man, I know there's so many people who are just like, don't tell me about that. The needle and thread is dead. No, it's not dead. Okay guys, it's not dead. The needle and thread is very much alive and it's adorable. If you have the ability to sew these pumpkins, they are worth it. They are so cute and you can use them everywhere all season long. Like I said, hang them from your chandelier, hang them from a wreath on your front door, hang them in a garland. I'm actually gonna use some jute to make a cute little garland for my sewing room. If you're interested in how I do that and what the end result is, check my Instagram. I'll have a highlight for that on my Instagram account, at Oakleroots. You could use old flannel shirts to make these pumpkins. Maybe you have a grandfather or a father who has an old flannel shirt they don't need anymore. Cut that up and make these adorable pumpkins out of them because how special would that be? I mean, I'm gonna tear up right now, but how special would that be for family members that you've lost if you did something like that and you put it on your Thanksgiving table with a little note about what you were grateful for with regards to them. I mean, the reason for the season, guys, is to remember how much we love our family, how much our friends mean to us, to be with one another, to appreciate one another. And these are a great home decor item, but also a great gift item. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Make sure you subscribe down below so you can see all the next tutorials we come out with. Every single Monday we have a new tutorial. We'll have more videos coming up soon with unboxings, gift ideas, because again, we're getting to that time of year where I need to give some people some ideas of gifts that I need. I hope you guys have a great week. Get out there and make something. Bye.